I personally with it all this profile, I'm sure I'm going to be so shaky. I'll be like, we have lots of ladies in the house with so many. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
that space for them because they're not seeing anyone who looks like them doing things in the space. Thank you very much. You, that that's the the space must be leveled. That the space need and they need their own heroes. So uh, my my next question will go to Miss Sheriff Akinwami. Ma, can you please tell us um, what efforts are people who are in the industry making to make sure that um, of course I know people like you. You are making you are making waves. You are you are trying to you know, to be up there for the game everything like that. So what are the things this the, the girl oh, child is doing now? Is it on WhatsApp? Out, what, what are the things that parents are supposed to be doing to to make sure that they actually get a place in the IT industry? Okay, thank you very much. This is so much background yeah. noise unfortunately I hope you can hear me so much background um, noise. Yes and we can hear you. Okay, great. So thanks for the question. So on what can parents do? Uh, first of all, what we need is that open your mind. As parents, please just try and open your mind. Most of the time, children are blessed with um, the openness of mind, which means that the moment they are born, they do not know any boundaries. They do not know any complications. Their mind is open. They are willing to explore. But the moment we begin to put boundaries for them, the moment we begin to restrict them, that is when they begin to believe that they can achieve things. So as parents, this first thing is open your mind, make sure that you provide the opportunity for them to use their inclusiveness, you know, and also, Right after that, also give them exposure. So, you know, enroll them in things that can help them. If you notice this is what my child is interested in, my child loves to play games. My child loves to things together, science and technology. Either a boy or a girl, please do not retreat, restrict that child. It's only doing one thing. There's so much background, I'm worried you can't hear me. Okay, great. Thank you. So, as yes, I was saying, please hold on. I think it's better now. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, yes. that it's very important as parents that we give that exposure to children right from the beginning. We enable them in a way that once we see what they are interested in, we do not put barriers. Barriers such as saying that this is, you are not a girl, you are not a boy, you cannot be, you know, fixing a toy or you can't put together the remote control, things as little as that. These are unseen barriers and biases that girl child often face and then stops, limits them into their, you know, developing their full potential. And then when we now get to school, we find out that at the beginning, the girl child you know, they, they get interested in science. Towards the senior senior classes, they begin to drift away. We need to continue to support them. Like um, Yali was spoke earlier, we need to put people, people needs to be there so that when the girl child is growing, they can see that, okay, I can see someone like me. This is a lady, this is a girl doing this and I can also do it. But if a girl child is growing up and they can see a look alike, they automatically believe that, okay, this is not for me, then I'll drop. And they are, there's no kind of career that a man can do that, you know, a boy can do that a girl cannot do, definitely. No matter how technical it is, people have been doing it. The best of the scientists, they've always been women. So there are no barriers at all. Thank you. You're on mute, Sister Rashida. Okay, can you hear me now? Thank you. So I'm saying that the next, my next question will go to Yalimisoko, Ms. Yalimisoko. I need you to um, help us um, perhaps um, that there's a, there's, a, there's a thing that our mind is preconditioned pre to believing that whenever you're always seen with a laptop or whenever you're always, you know, something that has to do with ICT, you know, a lot of people attribute it to fraud, or um, let me say the common name, Yahoo Yahoo. Do you understand? And how much more when it's a girl, you know, they make it seem like, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not something that is very, very good. And now, of course, this one actually um, 
has something to do with the parents. So I, I really want you to talk about that. Okay. Um. Thank you so yeah, much for having that's me. That's my again. question. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Thank you so much for having me again. So I think also it's the information that is relayed out there, right? So um, if you talk of Yahoo, Yahoo, I would really relate that to, let's say the Nigerian context of uh, maybe young people carrying laptops, right? Uh, that is not the same case if you come to a place like South Africa, right? Um, that is, um, you look at tablets and laptops and uh, computers are actually made available at, at, at schools. And I think in most households, those things are available. But I think uh, with the parents, it's really trying to understand what the child is doing with, with that laptop. Definitely some parents in more, um, I would say more developed countries, sometimes put a precaution to what a child can do with that laptop for fear of exposure to a lot of things that are actually not good, right? So you say, okay, I'm going to limit the applications on this laptop. I'm going to limit the applications on this tablet because my child might be exposed to certain things that are not right, which is a very good thing. And also at the same time, it limits their kind of um, ability to explore. So I think mostly it's trying to see how do you balance uh, both of those things. And also um, if you look at Talking about scams, I also think, like I said, it's a, a misconception, right? So because of the word that has gone out there to say, oh, if you see a young person in Nigeria busy on the laptop, they're either uh, trying to scam somebody or they're about to um, commit, uh, commit a fraudulent activity. I think it's um, a lot of information and education needs to go out there and say, you know what? do not limit the abilities of these young people. And with the young woman, sometimes they feel like, look, there's things that needs to be done at home, right? Um, there's chores that needs to be done. There's a whole lot of things that need to be done. You need to do those things. What are you doing on your laptop? You are a woman, you won't get married. You, you know, there's, so there's all those things. And if you look at the African child's mindset, usually it's an education. I'm, I'm, I'm originally Zambian. And when I look at that, it's okay, I need to go to school, primary school, high school, and from high school, I need to get into college and um, mostly the careers gravitate towards being a teacher, a nurse, a doctor, a lawyer, you know? And from that, I don't think I need to explore other waters because what comes after college is marriage, right? And um, marriage, I need to start um, um, uh, having children and taking care of my family. So it's like, you can be somebody, but you can't be too much. You can't go beyond that because once you go beyond that, you are not going to be able to keep a home. And sometimes when they see a child gravitating towards being really, really um, exposed and also being really active in trying to better themselves, they try to put that barrier because it's what society states should happen. So I think that's what needs to change. Thank you very much. You know, it's high time we need to start making people understand that the girl child can be somebody and of course, it's it's not so much when you aspire to be the best of the best of the best of whatever you want to be. Thank you very much for your submission. Just before we continue, I want to remind our YouTube viewers that they can drop their questions on YouTube, whatever questions we have, and then we can have them answered here. So um, the participants should also drop their names on the YouTube section. Please drop your names. And if you have questions, please do drop your questions on the segment session on YouTube. So of course, mo uh, moving on with um, the discussion, um, let me um, ask uh, Ms. Sheriff Akinwami, Ma, please, um, can you please um, tell us what the girl should be doing now? For example, like she said, or like you said earlier on, that, that certain things the girl should be doing in the house and they will make them feel like they are not supposed to be doing it. They're not supposed to, um try to fix the tv remote they're not supposed to you know do something you're not a boy you shouldn't be doing that so what 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 should every young child every young girl child out there watching us now what should they be doing in terms of their academics and in terms of trying to launch into the ict career okay thank you very much um so in terms of what girl child should be doing basically first of all i'll say please follow your interest so if you love to put together the remote, if you love to break things apart and you like to put it together, please pursue that. You may be looking at being an engineer. 
if you love to see how a game works, you have a mobile application, you have a mobile game, and you want to see how it works, and then you you are interested in seeing the you know what is behind it, the engineering behind it, the technology behind it. Please go for that and chase it. So in a nutshell, go for your interest. The most important thing, and why most um, technologists or most people in ITC, why they are mostly successful is because they are doing what they love. In anything you're doing, if you do not love it, if you do not have passion for it, it's most likely the possibility that you may not be successful because you begin to see it every day as a chore. You begin to see it every day as work rather than seeing it as every day as you know something you love, a hobby. And, and it's something you love that you develop on. It's something you love that will keep you up in the night, that will make you search for solutions. And what is ICT? ICT is solving problems. So if you look at the definition of digital today, what digital simply means is that resolves creating a solution, making something easier rather than doing it the manual way. So like for instance, for this conference, we should have been gathered in, in, in a hall somewhere in Lagos, you know, or, or in whatever location. But because of COVID, we are online. Technology has solved that problem that we are still able to achieve this conference by doing it online, okay? So that is what digital is about. So if your interest if you are not interested in something, there's no way you will be interested in solving the problem. There's no way you, you're going to put everything into what you love. So whatever it is you, you have interest for, see no barriers. Know that you have the ability. Know that there are people there who are doing it. There are people, there are ladies, there are girls that have done it in the past, and you can be successful. And even though it's not easy, you just have to continue to do it. The fact that you love what you're doing, then you would definitely be successful. So I put it in a nutshell, as a girl child, what should you be doing? Chase after your, your passion. If it's something you'd like to do, go after it and then you will be successful at it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's actually very important to chase our passions because we, apart from the fact that we're going to be successful, it also makes us the sense, the sense of fulfillment. What we to do? Thank you. So first, I will be asking um, Miss Yaluisa for my next question. And the question is that um, so a lot of people, for for someone like me, when I was young, I only knew few professions. I only knew there was medicine, banking, law, and um, what's that other um, um, common profession? Uh, around so that was the only thing we're made to believe we're made to believe oh the only professional um, things we could go into were medicine um, and lawyer being a lawyer and other professional bodies like that so a lot of people do not know the opportunities that are bound in the ICT so I need you to enumerate some of them for us just so people know okay I can do this I can do that I can do it besides all of the ones I mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, thank did you, you get so my much. question? Yes, I did. I did. Thank you so much. So I'm um, looking at the opportunities in ICT. To be honest, the opportunities are actually endless, right? Uh, just uh, going back to what Ms. Sherifat said, look, um, if you're in the ICT space, what you can do is there's there's so many ways you can look at it. You, could be, you can become a programmer. You can actually even be in the ICT space in admin, right? There's a whole lot of different levels in which you can, it just depends on your interest and you have to actually chase that. I'll give you an example of myself. So you're talking about the girl child who maybe you're thinking about all these other careers and say, this is what it's supposed to be. Fine, I was in high school. I was um, at a good school. The only exposure I ever had with a computer was how to switch it on and off and also how to create a folder, right? So beyond that, I really had no other exposure to a computer. And um, along the way, I met this young lady studying IT and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I want to do this. Yes, there are barriers that, uh, that come along the way. And I say, okay, uh, apply to college. Fees are so expensive. My parents can't afford it. I don't do it. I don't do it, but I get into different roles 
I work, I, I start taking myself to school, whether it's on a Saturday, it wasn't ICT related. But if you really want to do something, somewhere an opportunity will arise. And my opportunity came through blockchain technology. Not that I had to go to school to study that, but because I was interested and looking at, um, just going back to what um, Mr. Sherifat said, looking at now we're able to have this conversation on Zoom because it has been made available by the use of, um, of the internet, of applications that are built on top of the internet and all other things, right? I was able to go and do research because now all these resources have been made available to me. I did not need a teacher. And with that research, I was able to gather the information that I needed and I started applying it. I started applying it by just talking about it and talking to people about it. Sometimes my friends would say to me, oh my God, here she is again with her blockchain stuff, right? They were like, oh, please, we don't wanna hear that. We don't wanna hear that story. Can we just talk about something else for once? But I kept at it, I kept exploring. And then an opportunity came that I was given a scholarship program and that was my first interaction with the actual technology and what it looks like and how it works, right? No ICT exposure, but my interest actually made me get that opportunity. And with that opportunity now, I had firsthand experience with um, the technology. And when I went to that, um, when I went to Japan, I was top learner out of 50 learners from across the world. People who had exposure to technology already, people who are already uh, programmers, but I came out on top, not because I was the best, but because I was determined to be the best at that particular time. And with that, we're looking at this COVID-19 situation and looking at everybody else. I am the chairwoman of the United Africa Blockchain Association. It's an association that is looking at educating more people and exposing them to these possibilities. On top of that, I got a job as an eco lead for a company that is based in San Francisco and I'm the South African eco lead. Those are opportunities as well. It also gives you the opportunity to be a global citizen. I always say that there's a true meaning of global citizenship. It's me being able to participate in an American economy while I'm sitting back in my house in South Africa. A long time ago, if I needed to get a job in the US, I was supposed to get a visa, get on a plane, go and get accommodation in the US and stay there because I got a job. Now I can work from anywhere around the world. So the possibilities are really endless and it just depends on your interest and where you really want to place yourself. Thank you. Wow, well, that was quite impressive. And of course, uh, that's, a, that's, that's to show that there's really no limitations. There is nothing that we cannot do. There, as, as, as a girl child, there is really nothing that we cannot do. There is no limitations. There the, are the, 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 the enough whole worlds. Uh, so, okay, thank you very much. I just want to remind those of us that are watching us on YouTube that we can drop our questions. If you have questions, any of the panel, okay, so we do that today. And she's the white discovery to someone she, she is Muslim that she cannot be a lawyer or something. So, um, Ms. Sheriff Akiwomi, can you please answer that question? So, somebody is asking that why do people discourage um, them from doing what they love and then that what can she do? Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank yes, you. I heard you. So, the question is um, someone is asking why, why she's discouraged and uh, from doing what she loves. Okay, so first thing first, you need to yes. you need to understand that people can only advise based on their own knowledge and their own exposure. So I'll give you an example. In Africa, in Nigeria specifically, people of our age, most of our parents only were able to have education to a certain level, which means that their level of exposure is at a certain stage. Now, a parent that hasn't heard about um, latest technologies such as robotics, such as, you know, cybersecurity and some other areas new in technology. If you go to such a parent and say, this is what I want to do, they will only advise you based on what they know. So it is now left for you to know that, okay, this person is only advising based on what they, they cannot determine how far I should go. If you know what you're doing is legitimate, 
it is something you love to do and it is the right thing to do. Please see no barriers. You can go further to educate such a person. If you know this person's opinion matters in your life, such as your parents, right? You know that they have a say, enough for you can go while you're, you know, you're still with them. You need to bring them on board. You can share resources. You can get people who are already in that field to speak to them, right? I have a lot of ladies I mentor whom you know, I had one the other day and she's really interested in coding. She's really inter interested in programming languages and, and the parents keep saying, no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're developing to be an hacker. I don't want you to be an hacker. She wants to be a white hacker. Yes, she wants to hack, but she wants to do it legitimately. She wants to be a white hacker. She doesn't want to be a, a, a bad guy, but to catch the bad guys, guess what? You need to learn how to be a bad guy, even if you are a, a white hacker. But the parents keep saying, no, you, you go, you're going about doing this. And then I had to step in. She spoke to me, she, how can you help me speak to my mom? This is the issue. She needs to see that there are, certain, there are people like you that are doing this and they are doing well. Please, can you explain what it means? means? And then we got into a, a telephone call and we had discussion. She relayed her face. She talked about what the issues are and how much, you know, she doesn't want problem. And uh, we had to do some sort of education. And guess what? She's now in support of the, of the child. The child is doing well. She's beginning to do things, you know. So you, you need to look at the source of your advice. So what limitation has this source? The, the advice could be genuine. This person could really be, be concerned for you. They may really think that this is not the best decision you're making. But the first thing is, do you know if, if it's the right decision? Is this something you love? Then try to get facts. And, uh, and education, you know, share with this person and let they get the person on the. If it's still a struggle, then share. There, there are industry leaders, there are people whom you can share what they're doing with, with, with this person and let them know that this is what I'm looking after. Please do not take advices that will limit your potential, basically. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. The network was quite crappy, but I got most of your points. Um, thank you very much, ma'am. Um, there's a question here, and I want uh, Ms. Yalu Soka to answer the question. And the person is asking that, uh, the ICT industry is very broad, and like making research and all of that. But this person still wants to know if there are specifics, if there are specific aspects like the specific aspect of ICT like so and there, how many are they okay can you hear me mom yes I can hear you I can hear you and uh just before that I'll just like to say that I might be dropping off in the next 10 minutes uh for a doctor's appointment so I might not be able to uh be there for the rest of the event and thank you so much for having me so looking at the ICT aspects, to be honest, I can't really say right now, these are the certain aspects. I would say maybe from my field and what I'm doing, I'll be able to elaborate on that. So looking at um, the field I'm in, and that is emerging technologies, there's, uh, it, it just depends on your, on, on, on your interest, right? There's what we're, we're calling now the fourth industrial revolution. There is um, the aspect of you being part of the internet of things, doing robotics, there's uh, machine learning, there's blockchain technology. You could learn in all those aspects, you could learn how to code. That's one of the things that you could do. You could be a front end or back end developer. So there's so many aspects to it. And I think it just depends on what piques your interest. Personally, when I got into the space, I did not get into the space as a technical person. I got into the space because I looked at the possibilities of the technology that I was actually interested in. So when I looked at those possibilities, I now started getting the exposure to other things that I didn't know, right? And it's been a learning cave. Even right now, I'm still learning about the different um, aspects of the technology that I'm interested in. And so looking at that from a broader perspective, I think um, it would be great maybe coming from somebody that is really more technical than I am. They'll be able to elaborate on the other aspects of ICT. I could uh, elaborate on that. Um, I had a slide, Ms. Rashida, if I could be given access to share screen, I, I put together something. So I don't know if that is okay. Um, 
You can share your screen now, ma. All right, thank you. Okay, please let me know where you can see. Yes, ma, okay, I can great. see. I can see. So I'll just now. go to that particular. I put together site. So, so, so this particular site talks about the top five careers in IT. Um, yeah, like um, uh, Yal, she said earlier, the opportunities are endless. But however, if you look at what is trending now, there are five areas. So you could be a software developer. What do they do? These are the people that create games, that create mobile applications. If you look at, for instance, almost all of the applications that we have today, a lot of them are mobile applications. These are the people that build your website. These are the people that build software that we use, the banking software and the likes. Right now, the topmost career in IT, I can say confidently is a software developer because you are creating products. You are creating things that people use. You can sell this product. For instance, Facebook is, is, is a software, right? Instagram is a software. Twitter is a software. It's an application running. Uh, WhatsApp is, a, is an application. So if you create an application, if you develop skills in this area and you create an application and a lot of people see value in your application, before you know it, you could be selling it out a significant amount to a Facebook or to, 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 to a Twitter. So this is one of the greatest areas. And to be a software developer, what do you need to do? You need to learn to code. You need to learn to program. There are many programming applications you know that you can learn. There's Java, there's Python that can help you become a software developer. So that's one. Secondly, is the cybersecurity expert. This is another trending career, which is also my field. You could be a pen tester. These are the people that make sure that make sure that the software that's been developed is secured. So imagine you building a software and then it gets compromised and people using it and they are losing their money. They are losing their information and things like that. The cybersecurity experts, which ranges in different careers as well, as a pen tester, a white hacker, bug, bug, uh, bug hunter, consultant, security manager, they are responsible for ensuring that all of the information and the application are secure. There's also a network engineer. A network engineer is the one that ensures that there's internet, there's, there's network for you to be able to use this application and for, for us to achieve that connectivity. Then robotics engineer, very closely related to software developer because robotics is all about rules. So you create a robot, most of the chat box that we see on, on internet that we relate with, the, behind them are rules that work that says after A, do this after, and guess what? Those rules are what are called programming they are the codes that have already been created. So it relates very closely to software, software developer. And then as a database administrator, most of the information collected from application are actually stored on a database. And it's a database administrator that makes sure that this database is running and is actually providing the required information. So for instance, I want to log into my internet banking of my, of my bank account. And you know how important it is to have your bank and, and your money there. And then I log in. And I know that before I slept yesterday, I had 2,000 Naira in my bank account. And if I log in today and I can only see 500 Naira, I'll go ballistic. I'll just call the bank and say, what happened to my money? It is a database administrator that will make sure that the integrity of the database is secured, which means that somebody, and in conjunction with a cybersecurity expert, that someone does not have access to go and tamper with the data in the database. So these are just the five but, that I wanted to highlight, but, but there are lots more, there are lots. I'll also talk about bug hunters. So, so, so to be a bug hunter now, I don't need to be employed by a company. A company do not have to employ me and say, oh, you are now, I can sit in the comfort of my home, look at um, an application for any organization in the world, I know, uh, companies like Microsoft, like Twitter, and a, a couple of other companies pay bug hunters a lot. And then I, I begin to explore the application. I begin to look at it. What are the loopholes? I think they, uh, can I exploit this application? Can I break into this application? And the moment you can, for instance, with Microsoft, if you submit that to Microsoft, they'll pay you a lot of money because you have helped them to find out about the vulnerability so that they can close it before the bad guys pick it up. All right, so that, this is about the uh, top, top, top careers in IT. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that was a good... uh, sorry, I'm trying to stop sharing screen. Okay. 
All right, Nora. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's been a very interesting session. We have learned a lot. I hope that our parents have learned a lot. So girls have learned a lot too. So parents should be be uh, that please make uh, uh, pay attention to the kids and know what they really need of you and that we should make sure that we are it is relevant. And then, of course, we need to make them have, um, um, we need to start looking up to people like Missy Alwisoko, Ms. Central Akewami, Ms. Fatima, everybody here today that has been, that, that has come to this event to, to inspire people, to, to educate us, that we keep looking up to them, that we keep, that we know that the, the, the space is big enough to accommodate everyone, that you don't have to limit yourself, that ICT is not about Yahoo Yahoo, it's not about fraud, that we understand that it is very important that we pay attention to our interest and then we follow it very well. See no barriers and you can be successful. So we have come to the end of the, of the first session. And of course, Ms. Uh, is still here, is still very much here, and then she would be taking us so the second session, it was very, very um, um, good to speak with Ms. Alvisoko and Ms. Sheriff Akwabi. Thank you very much for coming on the event to have this insightful discussion. Thank you Thank so you very much, Trustee, yeah. 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 speakers for that good yeah. discussion. Yeah. I really learned a lot. I'm very sure my girls at home and the parents also were able to pick one or two things from them. So now, as she said earlier, we're moving to the second section. Seems the world needs more of us, that the world needs more of girl child in the ICT world. What more can we do to help people? So for this segment, I'll be having Fatima Salami and Noah at the back. Okay, thank you very much for joining me again. So to start with, I would want to engage both of you on the same question. Since we are talking about how the world needs us, what more can we offer and what more can we do? So I would like you to share and give an insight of the little about what you do and what you enjoy about your section. How has it affected your space and the economy, like to inspire the girls that you are out they're doing so many things. Seeing Miss Fatty is the top lady in First Bank. So I'd like you to start the section for us, ma'am. Okay, good morning, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but your audio is quite low. Okay. Okay. Um, that means. How about now? How about now? Hello? Hello? We can hear you loud and clear. Oh, thank you very much for confirming that. Okay, so how do we impact our girls? How do we make them look up to us in the field of ICT? Like one of the... Um, issues mentioned earlier on that where our girls in the ict world that how, why do why do we get um why are our girls not showing up as we go up the ladder in it a lot of them are affected by prayer pressure a lot of them don't see people they look up to like earlier mentioned a lot of them lack support from family and friends so as such they got discouraged and like earlier mentioned, a lot of them have misconceptions about what a career in IT really means, which is why a couple of them do not proceed to um, kind of um, shine out in the IT world. On a daily basis, I derive joy in saying that I, I contribute to the reduction of stress on people. And how do I do that? I'm happy to say that when people do, I'm happy to look through 
processes that people engage on on daily basis. And I'm able to pick out areas that IT can contribute to the improvement of the daily TAT or IT can contribute to the improvement of the processes. For example, like a, a, a service desk, people log issues and then these issues are reviewed by humans and then resolved. How do I come in or how do IT make that better? By producing a chatbot for the organization, whereby instead of people calling in, sending emails to get their issues resolved, they just log on using their mobile devices by either using voice or text to engage the chatbots to log their issues. And then that take the issue and look in into the database and see frequently produced um, resolutions to source issues. And then they're able to recommend to the users on how to go about the resolution of that issue. That takes off stress of a lot of people in the IT department. Coming to the area of robotics, in a car manufacturing company, where you have 10, 20, 30 people sitting down doing a routine job, by the introduction of a robot who can actually do the job of about 10 or 20 people, you see that the turnaround time for chunking out more cars in that organization will improve, thereby improving their bottom line, they're able to save cost and then improve upon the um, growth of the company. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Tura, you're muted. Thank you. It's, I said, it's so amazing knowing you do a lot of, it's so amazing knowing you do a lot of these things, being at the back end, having to work with a lot of things and what we are, the user interface, just see is the beautiful outcome of all these things. So thank you very much. And I'm sure even with the way you were explaining these things, it's so evident that you really enjoy your job and you love what you do. So moving to Noah Abdubaki. I'm shy with mathematics, shy away from IT. So I want you to inspire girls. Like, I know there's a miracle, but not everyone has been able to pick out what. So what do you think your own perspective is an entrance is making girls shy away from STEM courses and IC in general? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Ms. Tura, your, your, uh, the voice was breaking. Would you please repeat the question? Hello? Yes. I can hear you well now. I can hear you well now. Okay. Okay, what I said, I said so many girls shy away from STEM courses the ICT world, and we know there are so many factors. We think the major hindrance, or what makes girls actually shy away from this? Um, I believe it's, it's, it relies on the perception uh, that the culture and, and some parents and uh, tell to the children that, for example, math is not for girls, science is not for girls, that the STEM fields are just for boys. But here we are living the, 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 the reality of having imbalance in these fields. Uh, we can all feel the imbalance in, in such a crisis time, uh, like the, the, the pandemic era we're living now. We need more girls and women to, to, um, to get involved in the ICT fields, to uh, advocate for the women needs. Uh, what do they need from technology? Uh, which services can be offered to, to uh, help resolve the girls and women issues? 
uh, globally or, or in their own communities. So yeah, we need to, to clear this perception like um, STEM fields are for everyone, boys and girls, not only boys. Uh, girls are smart and can do very good at math and science and other um, subjects. Uh, so I believe that parents should support uh, their, their children, boys and girls, to pursue whichever um, passion or career they want. Um, and we have many, many free and online resources now to um, support children uh, to learn more about um, STEM. We have coding camps, uh, MOOCs, everything. Everything can be accessed online. Um, the community itself needs to shape um, this perception and we need to uh, offer more opportunities to girls. There are many scholarships out there to women in specific and uh, many scholarships out there offered to Africans. So um, I guess girls need to get out of their comfort zone. Uh, the world is waiting for them. So they need to chase opportunities. I know that getting out of the comfort zone is not that easy, but really we need more girls in, in shaping the technologies. We need more girls in even designing the technology itself. Yeah, uh, we need to close this divide. So girls, please don't be shy and start to chase these opportunities. Thank you very much. I'm sure the girls could hear what you said. Said you should not shy away from the ICT field. There are so many scholarships. And she said even for girls in specific and Africa. So I'm sharing the sound of scholarship. And we know what scholarship entails. It means you going to school at either discounted rates with opportunities and access to so many things. So, Mrs. Fatima, I would like you, someone asked the question here and said, how do we know, like, how can we check when girls, like, how can we introduce girls to ICT? And when do you think we can introduce them to ICT to check if they are interested? Because I know so many people have had this issue of going to study a particular course in school, and after a while, they discover, no, it's not for me. And they've actually go, like, spent a whole long time during that course, and afterwards, they actually have to go back I know, yes, no knowledge is a waste, but we know with time, we need to plan ahead for this distance. Okay, thank you. In taking that, I would love to talk about even choosing a career. Career is an occupation undertaken for a significant period of a person's life with opportunities for progress. So career is not something you jump into. Career is something that there must be a thought process before you arrive at a career path. Some of the pertinent questions you need to ask yourself before you arrive at a, uh, before you make up your mind to pursue a particular career is that, what are the things that I love to do? Even if I have to do it for free, what are the things that excites me? Am I a fast learner? Do I enjoy sitting down for long hours coding? Do I enjoy, solitary confinement, thinking through, do I have these analytical skills to think, uh, to think through questions and provide solutions? Outcome of this will enable you to identify a particular area of IT to focus on. IT professionals are like the go-to person in any organizations. So you must be a very versatile person for you to be able to want to um, end up with a career in IT. So what are the basic things you need to, um, to have to be able to dive into career in IT? Number one, from secondary school, you need to have uh, maybe come over as a science student, although we've seen now that a lot of students come from other fields to um, you know, dabble into IT. And to do that, you need at least to have five credits including maths and English, 
and a combination of other science subjects like economics, agri, geography, physics, and biology. With that, you'll be able to get an education in IT that will um, serve like an entry point to maybe like an OND or a bachelor's degree or a diploma. And on top of that, you could get certified in some specific areas like um, getting a Microsoft certification, like um, getting an Oracle certification, um, getting certification in uh, Microsoft and um, Amazon um, Web Services and so on. So you could, you need to get an education first. Then two, you need to be very inquisitive. You need to be very eager to learn. You don't get contented with the status quo. You have to have a flair for reading. For example, if you are gifted 100 MB of data, what will you do with it? Will you just chat away on Facebook or you will use this to read and study articles that will get you grounded in the field of IT? And finally, you need lots of creativity and imagination. Working in IT requires you to be a thoughtful problem solver and a host of, a host of other Thanks. Thank you. Yes, let me pick the last word. You can be a problem solver. Everybody wants to be a problem solver. There are so many problems. And what actually makes you stand out or be an entrepreneur or be good at what you do is when there is something that really needs attention and you are finding a solution to it. So we've learned about the subjects we are meant to take very important in secondary school, math, physics, and the like. So we just have to, I, I have this goal of saying, if you want to be good, then you have to, you have to be at your best. So when it's time for you to fall back, it's easy for you to fall in between like the better aspect of it. So for me, um, no, no, I would like if someone asks the question here also saying, is it possible to be a web developer and a programmer? Yes, it is. In fact, a web developer is like a... Did you get my question? Yes, I did. And I've said that a web developer is like a... Miss Hello, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Hello. Can yes, you hear me? Okay. So I'm saying that a web developer is like a, a subset of an application developer. So they build for the internet, just like the mobile app developer develops for mobile devices like a phone, a tablet, and so on. So a web developer is the subset of an application developer. So it's more like they are inclined. Yes. Okay, thanks for the clarification. So I know this question will actually go to both of you. So I want both of you to give a perspective of what you think about it. I have questions here talking about gender balance, how you manage work-life balance, managing your career, your life. Like That's the question every lady in the STEM world, in a career that is male dominating, mm -hmm. get every day. People will be like, you get married, how do you manage your children? How do you manage your children? I'm so busy, get lost and not. So I wanted to give that clarification. How can we manage? I'll start with Bora, then Ms. Fatima will take it from there. Which one there? Okay, I, I really uh, like talking about this issue, um, how to create the work-life balance uh, for, for girls and women, considering that the priority in our communities is to graduate and get married and start a family and having kids and stuff. So uh, to be honest, it's not that easy, uh, especially if, if um, if a girl wants to prioritize her career, uh, but it's it's doable. It's not uh, um, impossible. Um, 
we have endless opportunities in ICT. So a girl can can work on a freelance basis, uh, on a part-time basis. Uh, she even can work from home. Um, some corporates offer uh, uh, work from home opportunities. Uh, for example, in, in such a time, um, I've been working from home uh, for, for more than three months now. I, I work in a, in, a, in a corporate at Dell Technologies. Um, so the internet uh, made it possible to, to try to create this balance. You can still be at home, take care of your children while taking care of your career as well. Also, uh, if you want to develop yourself, develop your technical skills, there are many online uh, opportunities uh, uh, you can uh, 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 enroll in, like um, online courses or even online degrees, masters and PhD. Some of them are even uh, for free. Uh, so uh, it's and managing kids for any career is, is hard. So okay, thank you. Uh, being a mother is another full time job. Thanks for sharing your insights. So I want to get Ms. Fatima's perspective of this. Okay. Um, being married with children and still upholding a career in IT is not easy. <laughs> but then you will be able to achieve this by being highly disciplined. You know, it's like you will really need to go out of your way to, to, to say that I don't want to let go of my career and then my family is equally important to me. And you will be very lucky. This will be fairly easy for you if you have a supporting family who can help out in times of need. I've had to step down on some career moves just because I need to stabilize my family. And I never regretted that. And I never regretted it, which is one of the reasons why you see that by the time you move up the ladder, you see less women because a lot of them, as they even do, they even have more responsibilities than men in these instances because they will take care of the family and then take care of the of, uh, of the of the office front. But I tell you, it's achievable. You just need to be determined. You need to be disciplined and map out your priorities. And I'm sure that definitely you will be able to succeed at both ends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I remember, although know, I'm still growing up, <laughs> so that's what I've got to the peak of it. I remember someone telling me, you have to choose one. Is it your family or your career? How do you manage? How do you balance? And there's this fear, and there's this thing that everybody, every lady hears when you are getting to the top of the ladder. And they are like, you have to do twice as more, thrice as more. And one thing that people really don't understand is we are actually doing more. You said earlier, managing the family, mm -hmm. getting things done at work, and every other thing. So I think I give kudos, kudos to the ladies out there. I'm so proud of it, of the achievement of everybody who is the female gender is doing it. So I know I've had several questions from YouTube, and they are quite funny, but I know it's not bad because no question is, is every question deserves to be answered. So there's one question saying, how can I be a lawyer and a computer engineer at the same time, or maybe a programmer? But there's another one saying, is it possible to be a lawyer a doctor and a computer engineer at the same time. What it entails, what it takes to be, to take up this field. Oh, 
Okay. Um, I believe that. Uh, so, Mr. Matt, can you stand up? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I guess I've missed the last part of the of your question, but I will respond to the part mm -hmm. I've listened to. Um, so I believe that degrees are not that important like before. I've seen lawyers who are working as um, system admins um, and, and many other uh, people are shifting their careers to ICT fields. So it's not that hard anymore. You don't have to have a, a bachelor degree in computer science or computer engineering to work in the ICT field. Um, many people are now self-taught. Um, so you can, if you're determined and eager to learn, you can learn more in, in a year, for example, that then you can learn in, in, in college. So um, if you have specific goals or, or specific web development, mobile development, you can learn more if you give from your time uh, to, to learn the theory and, and practice on your own. And if you start, for example, to do some freelance jobs, you can, you can learn from this experience and, and gain more experience and then you can for example, apply to uh, to full time jobs or continue working as a freelancer. So, um, as I said, shifting careers is not that hard anymore. Anyone can do it. Anyone can still join the ICT uh, fields. And uh, we have um, for lawyers. There's. Um, a field for for ICT lawyers now and, and, and cyber security crimes and stuff. So you can be. So yes, I like the fact that you said that these girls can actually do one or two things at the same time, taking up freelance jobs and every other thing. So I, I saw Miss Fatima nodding when you were saying it. So I just want to add, to, add more, to add something to that. Okay, so um, the IT world now has become so invasive that it has practically entered into every other field of specialty. There is no field that you see right now. There's no uh, field of story, uh, uh, field of endeavor, a career path that you see now that there's no IT path to it. You see medical doctors now who are machine learning engineers who write codes to predict or diagnose uh, ailments in patients. You see lawyers now who can code, who can write codes to, or to, to give judgments. You understand? So IT field has practically touch base with every other field of specialty. So there's no boundary. So you can see doctors who are coders. You will see lawyers who are coders. You will see people in, uh, you see accountants who, are, who write banking application software. You understand? So every other field of thought has been merged with IT. And it's very easy for people to swing in and out of fields right now. Like it is it's fairly, it's very easy to do right now that it used to be in the olden days. And to make it a lot easier, you see the likes of MITs having open courses for people to take online. So without actually going to the four walls of a university, you can become a degree holder in any other field. So it's fairly easy for people now to get into a lot of other fields. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. So girls out there, I'm sure you can see, it's not about being twice, working twice as hard. Now you can actually work even five times as hard as they're expected to, since we have we have interest in becoming lawyers and doctors and still manage this media and IT space. So some people were asked, okay, I guess one asked that how can we involve girls in the primary school about ICT? Because I know most times most people interact with the secondary school students. 
maybe we feel those children are too small to learn or something. So like, what can schools, what can the government, what can teachers do? So this is going to be like an ending statement. So like just an encouragement to both the parents, the teachers, the government, and every other person. So I'll start with Ms. Fatima, then Ms. Noah will take over afterwards. Okay, so now, for example, in my children's school, they have computer uh, club, you understand? So introduction of such gatherings for students at that age, they are forced to start learning about what goes on in the ICT world. Now they have tablets that they use for their studies. They give them their notes on it. So at that tender age, they have been introduced to what goes on, they are exposed. My six year old daughter knows how to use my mobile phone than I do. So they, they practically, they, they, they have that knowledge thrown at them from every facet of life. So there's no way, there's no turning back. They've incorporated it into the curriculums of secondary school, even primary school, if, even nursery school right now, they have computer studies um, as a subject that they teach. So that has been engraved into their learning curriculum. So as they grow up, they are growing with IT, uh, ICT. Thank you. Thank you, ma. So over to Ms. Noah. Yes, I agree that children are very exposed to technology with, with its two sides, the good and bad ones. So um, I believe that we need to embed that in our education for children how to stay safe online. That's the basic thing uh, before learning uh, uh, other stuff about technology. Um, how to stay safe online and what we can use the internet for instead of spending most of our time on social media. Um, I have no objection with social media, but uh, there are many uses for the internet other than spending time um, on online games and social media. Um, also, um, governments can can start to use the, the, the tech tools with teaching uh, children um, about any subject. Um, for example, um, stop printing books and, and using applications on their tablets or their books, um, teaching them how, how to create an email and how to use it. These are the basics, but they're essential. Um, and I've seen some corporates start to do uh, some efforts with um, teenagers, not primary schools, but um, kids are very smart and we need to invest in this. I've also seen some efforts with um, organizing um, coding camps for kids and robotics courses. So these are, these are amazing efforts. And um, so mainly invest in, in kids and, and encourage them to, um, to learn more about the, the, the opportunities they can have. I've seen um, teenagers learn how to, to, they already have jobs. Uh, they have already established their careers by learning how to code. So it's not about age anymore. It's about investing in these kids to, to be pioneers in the ICT fields. Thank you very much for sharing that. Yes, I like the aspect where you made mention of we being cautious of what they uh, what they have access to because yes, I you know I've had several experiences when you get to open the internet and you get these pop-ups that are not related to what exactly you want to do. And we know kids can be so inquisitive. So I guess this makes this message go to the parents, guardians, and schools that are willing to expose our children to this at the early age. So if this goes by the slogan, catch them young, let them get involved at an early stage. Let them, let this inclusion be there. So to give a summary of all what has been said earlier on, 
I know some people have been asking questions about subjects, about the ICT world. Because earlier I said that the sciences, the maths, very important. You get to show English in the languages also. Um, physics, chemistry. These are more related when you get to secondary school. Primary school, I know we have like the general subject for everybody. Then secondary school, you have to go to the science classes where you get inclined with your physics, chemistry. You have computer sciences. There is, I think even it's, there's computer, there's IC. There are so many ways kids are being involved. Science engineering is open to every gender. And we are calling on females to join us in this world. I, I promise it's going to be an interesting one. You've seen ladies who are top in their field. They did not just start from where they, the, where we read their profiles. They started from, from this class. They started from a particular level. So they got to where they are. So I think we need to get mentors to encourage ourselves, look out for people. Mentors might not actually be someone You are side by side. Not someone you like, which one them, but who I can look up to on the internet, check out all their achievements, things they've done, how they've grown, and how they've developed themselves to get to this stage. We've been we've heard that there are so many courses, and now this COVID era is even a time when all of us can make it of this opportunity. There might be no reason for us to go out in a while. Everyone is going virtual. There are courses on Udemy, even on LinkedIn, Alice, so many learning opportunities. Like even schools are going virtual. I saw my 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 nieces and nephew having classes online. So we have classes online. Quite insightful, and I'm happy that the we, we are open to so many changes and so many opportunities. So thank you very much, Ms. Noah and Salami. For joining us. I can see Michelle if I still online with us. Thank you for still being a part of this. So I would like to have Mr. Said Balogun, who is the senior special advisor to the governor in science and technology, give us a goodwill message, like three to five minutes. Let the kids hear what you have to say. Since you are basically, you are advising the government on science and technology, and that's basically what we're talking about. Let the children know that the government has a lot of things for them at heart. Let's hear from your end. Thank you. Mr. Said Balogun. Okay, so while we wait for Mr. Said Balogo, we have Ms. Ms. Mata Alade. Ms. Mata Alade is the founder and president of Women in Technology in Nigeria. We are inviting her now to take our own um, goodwill message. Ms. Mata Alade, are you with us, ma'am? Okay, so while we wait for Ms. Martha Alade to join us, I want to say thank you to the second panel. You know, that was very, very insightful. That was very, very educating. And of course, I want to believe that a lot of children out there are inspired and a lot of parents are um, educated on what they should be doing and how they could manage, you know, being um, a parent or being a parent who wants to help their child to be um to to be uh, to to venture into ICT and and again I don't know if Miss Martha Alade is ready to join in now to give us a good message but while we um while we do that I want to remind every younger out there that's watching this now that you should see no limitation like uh, Miss Sheriff Akin, when we told us earlier on, see, just make sure you're not seeing any, any limitation. Make sure that you, you see whatever you can do as something that, that you can do. And you don't see ICT as something hard as for the boys. There is nothing like that. 
if Miss Sharifa Akinwomi can do it, if Miss Fatima Salami, if Miss Fatima Salami can do it, if Miss Ashraf Noah can do it, then you can do it. There is absolutely nothing stopping you from being whatever you want to be, from pursuing a career in ICT, from being the best version of whatever you want to be. All you need to do is identify your passion, identify your interest, know where you want to go. Get a mentor, like um, Mutia said, Mr. Ross said rather, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be somebody who is by your side or something. It could be somebody you're looking up to, you're watching their footsteps, you're looking at what they do. How about you start looking up at people's profile on LinkedIn, look at people who you think inspire you a lot and start tolling that line, start talking to them. Then start, start a journey for yourself today. So if you find an interest, pursue it, try to make sure that you are not just there, that you are doing something for yourself. And indeed, that will be doing something for humanity. Okay, so we're still waiting for Miss Martha Alade to join us. Okay. I am being informed that Miss Martha Alade is with us. Miss Martha Alade is okay. So <laughs> we're still waiting for her to join us. But while she does that, if you have comments, if you have um questions, you can still drop them. And if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please make sure you do that because you are still going to see loads of interesting educating things about the ICT sector on this page. So subscribe to this channel, like, give a thumbs up, and um, you could drop your comments and all of that. And we will be very willing to see it. I'll be very willing to um, go on this ICT journey career with you. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So while we're still waiting for Martha Alade, I don't know if there is any of our um, discussants or any of our panelists who wants to say one or two things. Okay, so I'll say one or two things while we wait for our good realness. Okay. Is she in now? Is she in? Okay. So I'm being informed that Miss Martha Alade is with us now and she is going to take good bill message. Right, Ms. Martha Alade is the founder of Women in Technology in Nigeria. We are very pleased to have you join us on uh, this session today, uh, on the event rather. And we hope that whatever you're telling us today is going to inspire a lot of young girls out there. So, Ms. Martha Alade, you are yet on on your video, so we can see you. Okay, ma'am, please, can you, can you unmute your audio, ma'am? Okay. I can see you. Can Thank you, you Ms. Martha, for joining in the event today. Thank you so, so much. So we can have your goodwill message now, ma'am. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Good afternoon, everyone. I believe you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, so firstly, I would like to thank Lucom Informatics for inviting me and also appreciate your putting this program together at a very crucial time like this. If there's any time we need gender balance and digital inclusion in society, it is now. So the COVID-19 pandemic has opened everybody's eyes to the reality that technology is the key driver to sustainable development. As a matter of fact, ICT is the key to the realization of the SDGs, common 20, 
30. Yet, we still have fewer women as leaders in tech and fewer girls who are picking careers in tech. But um, having few, few, fewer girls in technology is not just something we should take lightly. It's a big uh, problem because the average consumers of technological products and services all around the world comprises about approximately 50-50 ratio of men to women, either as direct or indirect consumers. So if a tech product is built only by men in the team, some features that women may need might be left out, which would reduce the quality of the product. In fact, evidence has shown that companies with balanced teams are successful. But however, the good news is that else, for instance, we always um, say that we have cultural and religious barriers. We all know that, but to be honest, that barrier is, has been lowered tremendously due to this COVID because everyone has been forced to rely on technological and uh, technological services immensely. And everyone has been forced to work with technology, both the literate and non-literate to survive this period. And again, women and girls can now work acceptably from home, which is good for, for women in the extreme northern part of Nigeria, who are uh, most, mostly, or some of them are confined to their homes. They can now work from homes. Now also, as millions of jobs are lost around the world, technology is also creating more and more jobs. So that is a good thing for us indirectly through this COVID. Now, we also say that um, societal gender stereotypes is another issue that prevents more girls from you know, picking careers in STEM or from being in the field of technology. But the, the good news also is that more awareness are being created on the importance of women and girls in ICT, especially through programs like the ITU International Girls in ICT uh, effort. All over the world, the, this event is being marked with massive interventions to close this di uh, digital divide. And we can see from this event how Lukman Informatics is one of such um, organizations around the world. And if I'm not wrong, even this virtual event will enable Lukman Informatics to reach more and more girls around the country at a minimal cost. So that's still a good part of this post-COVID experience and the new normal that we are all you know, uh, migrating into now. So another thing we usually quote, or another excuse we usually give why we don't have much women in STEM is that uh, we usually say we lack sufficient role models. And that is the truth. We do lack sufficient role models in ICT. We lack sufficient role models as leaders, uh, women as leaders in tech. But also through these same girls in ICT celebrations, more and more women in tech are being showcased. I believe that after this program, uh, we are going to see that Actually, if we take a deeper look, we can unravel more and more women in tech that are eating across the country. And also we do quote that uh, STEM pedagogies and entry barriers, you, they are two important factors that also limit women from um, taking, um, uh, taking the lead in tech. And that is the truth. In fact, I do know of some very brilliant girls who dropped out of the field of tech because they failed physics. But the good thing is that the, the line between the arts, the social sciences, and the sciences is getting blurred, is getting thinner, as technology now craves for human-centered designs. So whether any girl is in humanities right now, or language heart, or she's not even strong in physics, even humanities, if you're in humanities, language arts, dance, drama, music, visual arts, name them, there's a place for technology. There's a place uh, in technology for such a person because right now we we uh, a lot of organizations are looking for uh, user experience designers, user user experience developers, researchers, content strategists all around the world. So there is a place for everyone. Now another thing we quote that is um, that limits women in Nigeria, particularly, is unfavorable policies. As we know, Nigeria and some other countries, not just Nigeria, are dominantly patriarchal. But today in Nigeria, we can see that the federal government, through the Ministry of Communications 
and digital economies churning out policies for digital inclusion through the Digital Girls Club and other interventions. So everybody is being awakened. So right now, as I speak, I can confidently say that there's almost no excuse because efforts are all over the world. Efforts are everywhere. So there is room for everyone to thrive in tech. There's room for any girl who wants to be anything in tech. There is room for all. no more excuses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, mom. Thank you so much. Um, everybody, everyone watching this now, you heard that right, she said there is a place for everyone. There is a place for everyone. So there are no limitations and there is no limit, there is no work, there is no extent that you cannot pursue when it comes to ICT. And of course, the stereotypes has to stop. So if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please kind of make sure you do so now. Just press the subscribe button and um, don't forget to like us on all our social media pages at look for look on informatics. Yes, look on informatics. So it's been a very, very interesting day, honestly, to be very honest. Apart from the fact that we have learned a lot. Honestly, everybody here on our panel session, you're all an inspiration to everybody out there. To, to be very, to be very honest, I am really inspired. And of course, we've been hearing about um, women who are doing so well, women who are not bounded by any limitations, women who are very successful. And of course, I am privileged to meet some of you today. Thank you very, very much for being an inspiration. Thank you very, very much for sharing your stories for enlightening us and opening our eyes to things some of us do not know. And of course, for encouraging parents to, to take the lead, to make sure they're encouraging their children, to make sure they're open-minded, open, open -minded, to make sure that we are not made or condemned to believe that women cannot do this or women cannot do that. So thank you very, very much for joining in. So like I said, it's been a very long day. We are supposed to have Mr. Said Balogu join us now to have his own speech. I don't know if, okay, he's here. But is he ready to take his speech? Okay, okay, so. Okay, so. Thank you very much, Ms. Makalade and Rashida for that engagement. So now we'll be having a good a, a video message from Olinzao, who is a top is one of the top management of IT. He is the Secretary General of ITU. So, so, just sit back and enjoy. Thank you. This can you hear the video?
We had um, IT issues. Sorry about the issue. The video was playing in more. I think no, yeah, that was audio and IT issues. A reason why we need more ladies and the IT field, like we need ladies helping us with the back end, making sure things are on set and all. And I'm very sure you ladies on this engagement would be ready to take up this field when come. So finally, the time our video is coming up, we'll be having Mr. Said Balogun with us, who is, a who is a senior special advisor to the governor on science and technology. Thank you for joining us. You have been on this section with us since we started, and it's going to be very nice to hear your insight. Let's know the perspective of the government towards the engagement for the girls in science and technology field. Thank you very much again, Mr. Said Balogun. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Hello. sir. Thank Hello. you very much. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, okay Please, uh, sir, your video so we can see you. If you don't mind. Uh, okay. Uh, give me... Um, give me some seconds, please. Okay, no problem, sir. I'm sure the girls and every other listener will be excited to have you and listen to your engagement. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. You can go ahead, sir. Hello, good afternoon. you see me? Hello? Hello, good afternoon. I can hear you. Please go on, sir. Yeah, good, yeah, good afternoon. Okay, well, uh, my message to you know all in the house is uh, you know wishing you you know the best of the girls in ICT. Uh, I've been in, in the ICT industry. I've had the opportunity of working with many ladies, and I can assure you that those who have chosen career in ICT from amongst you, they are achievers. Wherever they get to, many of them show the quality that they are made of. Many of them have risen even to the top to the most senior technical positions that a company can offer in an ICT environment. Uh, what I'm saying in essence is that, you know, in ICT, there is no barrier for the women. You can go as high as you want to go. Also, you, in most of the roles that are available, there is a lot of flexibility for you so it can allow you uh, do what you want to do. Uh, a lot of 
these rules nowadays even allow flexible work. That means you can work from home when you need to work from home. You can attend meetings online. Uh, some of the common roles that you find women in, in ICT, you will find them as programmers, we find them as network engineers, we find them as security engineers, we find them as consultants, we find them as project managers, team leads, just name it. Uh, I could give you an example of MTN. I mean, some years back, you know, MTN happened to be the first telco in Nigeria, you know, to give the most senior technical position to a lady. Uh, I mean, the former CTO of uh, chief technical officer of MTN was, was a lady and a mother as well. So, like I said, there is no barrier, you know, for you as women in ICT. It's for you to take the right learnings, pick up the right attitude, the attitude of active collaboration, a can-do spirit, willingness to solve problem, and show leadership in your roles. I believe with those four skills, you know, I will not say the sky is the limit. I mean, there is no limit. You can go on to become the CEO of the organization. Like you see in uh, the telecom industry as well, a uh, good example is uh, Main One. You know, uh, I mean, the founder, the CEO of Main One is a lady, and the company, as we all know, is doing well, and both in, in the business world and in the social, in the area of social enterprise. So, there is no limit, I would repeat again, it's you and what you want to be that will determine the course. And of course, if you need guidance, you know, you could go online to get some materials and you could consult those who have gone on the path before. So by going through uh, LinkedIn, if you register yourself on LinkedIn, you will easily find a lot of ladies who have made good achievements in their career and you just need to send them a message on linkedin and i'm sure many of them will be ready you know to support you take you up on your career path and you'll be on the path to success god willing thank you very much thank you very much mr side value for that engagement it's always beautiful when you have the male gender encouraging the females to take up the ICT courses or STEM courses. So that's the end of my message. You made Thank mention you. of so many things that I love to pick keywords when people talk. He said, if you are as a lady, take up a field in the ICT, you are an achiever. I want you guys to write that out, like write it out. If I take a course in the ICT world, I'm an achiever. You need so many, he made mention of mentorship, and there are leadership opportunities. Even give us an example of a lady who I think MCN has to be has to be rewarded for that, being the first woman in the top of the ICT world. It didn't just say she's a woman, she said she's a mother. That's to show you the gender balance, everything, there's a space for everybody. Let's be inclusive, let's be open, let's be welcoming. No one said it's going to be easy when you are climbing to the top. It actually even gets harder. But when you create the room and tell yourself there's no limitation, there is no limitation to your achievement. I believe the sky is going to be a start. Sorry, I, apologies. I, 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 forgot, I forgot to mention apologies. There are okay, there okay. actually been two ladies that have there have actually been two ladies that have been the city of you know of MTN Nigeria, as far as I can recall. Uh Miss Funke Funke Upeke that you know eventually went on to start up main one, was also you know at the ends of affair technical affairs in, in MTN at the time. And then before she left to start up Main One, and then later on, uh, Linda St. Waifo, uh, you know, became the next. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that yeah. Position in MTN. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for that. I'm sure you guys, if you have been going online to check ladies in the IC, a lot has been said about Funke Opeke. She's a top lady. She's a CEO. She's the CEO of Me One. Like, this is one big company that everybody wants to be affiliated with. 
So yeah, as made mention of two ladies, you've listened to several ladies, Michelle Fatimi, Fatima Salami, Matala, this Matala Day, Radno Abubaki, even myself, I'm proud. I'm a lady in the ICT. Yes, I'm a lady in STEM. I study chemical engineering. So it's going to be so beautiful when we get out there. We see ladies taking up this space. We see ladies at the top because I don't like to. There's always this significant difference. There's this significant, like, there's this addition where you see a lady in the top row. So I hope the space is going to be open to everybody and to everyone who's affiliated with the company and organization. So let's be welcome and let's create the space for the nation builders to be a part of the organization. Indeed, everybody should make sure that you know we're actually taking up that, that space. And of course, I'm proud of you, Mr. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and of course, I'm proud of everybody here today. Thank you very much for being an inspiration. I keep I kept saying and saying and saying that you are an inspiration and really appreciate your coming for our event. Um, before we move on to the next thing, I want to remind you, if you have not um, subscribed to our YouTube channel, please make sure you do that and then make sure you follow us on all our social media pages at Look Up Informatics. Um, the next thing is that um, we want to hear a good, um, a good room message from the CEO Look Up Informatics. She is also doubles as member of director of the civil foundation is actually an involvement of so many things i don't want to start mentioning that because the time is fast spent and so look what i mean mr look i mean will be joining us now to give a good old message of course he is the convener of today's event and he is going to join join us soon of course to probably tell us why he did this and um why he's putting all of <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mr. Lukman, CEO of Lukman Informatics. Good afternoon. Yes, um, We are at the moment. Okay, yes, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amino Lukman, the CEO of Lukman Informatics. I'm here to appreciate everyone for participating in today's event. I wish to tell you a very brief story, which is about my encounter with girls in ICTs and science. While in secondary school, while in secondary school, I realized we had a lot of girls colleagues or female colleagues in school. And in actual fact, they were so much that we're almost 50-50 in population. However, as we moved into the tertiary institution, we realized that the females in science courses dropped drastically. They dropped to almost a percentage of 75 25 meaning we are 25% females and our 75% males. But when we actually got into the industry, we came to realize that the numbers almost vanished, meaning that some of them who even studied science courses with us went ahead to take other professional professions outside the ICTs. And for those reasons, we realized it. numbers quickly contributing to the economy of this of the nation of the globe we cannot collectively improve the globe when only is on the globe. and that is why
that they won't just participate in sources from the early stages, but they are going to go at the university and in particular, and as well going to the workplace to work in the ICT industry. That is where you are needed. You are needed to come on board. You are needed to come and contribute to national and global development. Thank you very much. So yes, um, for many of us who have been having some technical issues, let me apologize. Um, we had some audio issues earlier in the day. Um, we couldn't come actually, you know, um, on this part of the world where we come from in Nigeria. I know we have people from 15 countries of the globe. Where we come from in Nigeria, we usually have some little technicalities, but we are very happy that we are going on well. Thank you very much once again. I would want to urge us to keep up on our mails. You get more mails. I know some of us have gotten about four to five emails. You are still going to get more mails after the event. Thank you and stay blessed. Okay, thank you, the, um, Mr. Luke Manamino, the convener of today's event. And um, we have come to the end of the event. We want to say thank you. We can't thank you enough. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for joining the event. Hello. To share Hello. Experiences. Hello. Hello. So I have a gift hello, for the house uh, for those. Oh, oh, hello. 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 So I would like to announce uh, um, a token gift of a uh, hundred dollars worth of learning credits on them for those who want to take up some courses on Udemy. Uh, through Lucom Informatics, we will be providing a uh, hundred dollar worth of uh, vouchers. So those who uh, need to to learn one thing or the other online with respect to ICT, uh, would make use of that um, opportunity through Lucom Informatics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for the gift thank you so much thank you we really appreciate you sir for that you're welcome so, thank, you. thank you okay so like i said it's been a very long day we can't thank you all enough for being here since morning miss fatima salami since morning you've been here with oh, us Bye. Yes, and every other person I didn't mention. Thank you, Mr. Said Balogun. Thank you so much. Thanks for the gift. We have come to the end of um, today's event. Like I said earlier, my name is Rashida Opere. I am a social entrepreneur. I run a foundation, the Helpmates Foundation. At the Helpmates Foundation, what we do is we we help we mentor secondary school students in areas of self-discovery so it kind of has something to do with what we're doing today making sure that children find the passion and they pursue it so we encourage them to make sure that they um get through to what they really want to do and they keep at it and we also provide educational material to um, <laughs> indigent and secondary Cool. So you really want to check us out on www.thehelpmatesfoundation.com. Mr. Ra, over to you. Yes, I saw a message now for Ms. Matala. They're saying we should allow the baby join in. <laughs> the, baby, the, baby, the baby is actually a member, like one of us. The one of the planners for this event, Ms. Mutia Adeyemo, she was supposed to give a speech, but she's quite busy. Like we said, there's this, we need to have this work-life balance, which is managing. So I'm Ms. Chiva Yusuf, I'm a chemical engineer working in the oil and gas industry. I also have a foundation of mine where we encourage 
students to take up education like by sponsoring them and letting them know that there's a reason for them to take their academics seriously mm -hmm. i'm also a board member with society of petroleum engineers where we reach out to secondary school students and every other person in the industry telling them about the stem world so if you really want to know more about sp lagos if you want us to reach out to your school you can send a mail to us sp lagos at gmail.com or you check out our website on www.splagos.com. Thank you very much. Thanks so much to Lucom Informatics for bringing us on this platform to share our views and to speak to beautiful ladies. I don't forget Sona Bias is real, it's still out there. Use your face mask if you really have to go out, your hand sanitizers. Stay safe, stay indoors, and be good. See ya. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. It was nice. It was a lovely engagement.